Father God. I just pray that people would see and maybe catch a vision and touch a, a nation of people, Father God, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we just thank you for tonight. Just pray that tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'll grab a chair. So I halfway lied to you last week because I told you Bruce Plummer was going to be here t today. And we've been trying to get this First Nations people, Indian ministry going for a long time. And every time we get ready to do something, something happens. So Wednesday, Tuesday. Tuesday he gets a phone call from his daughter in Michigan and during birth his granddaughter died. And so he is back in Michigan right now. Uh, actually the funeral was today and uh, I just asked you to pray for him and his family. But Mark's here, Mark Pearson's here and he is kind of Bruce's right hand man and he is going to lay out some stuff Vision stuff, I don't know, just whatever God's got on his heart about the First Nations people, about Montana Indian Ministries, and we're looking at kicking that off here, and we're not sure what's going to happen. So, come on, Mark, let her rip. And Thank you. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, JT. Um, put this in my pocket here. In the work, line of work that I do, uh, I'm not mic'd up a whole lot, and uh, so you guys will have to pardon me. I've been yelling at football games the last two days. That might be a little bit hoarse. Uh, my son, 16 years of age, played at Cut, Cut Bank yesterday, and they did beat Cut Bank, so if anybody's from there or knows family there, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> But we were real excited. I got real, I'm very excitable at football games especially. I, I watched the Thursday night game. For those of you who might catch it in my accent, I'm from Houston, Texas originally. And so the Texans are my team. We tried very hard, but at the end didn't get it. But that's okay. Hey, no booze for the Texans, okay? Um, first thing I'd like to tell the, uh, whoever's up top, uh, if you go ahead and cut that first video, the number one. And uh, first thing I'd like for us to do is to watch a quick video, that number two. And um, after we do that, we'll get into it, okay? You guys watch the screen for a minute. Cut that one if you don't mind. Sorry. Can you cut that one? Can you cut the second one? Sorry. Thank you. Hope all of you recognize that if you're a believer in Christ Jesus, you've been made brand new. Praise God for that. Let's go ahead and open up a prayer before I start. I always want to go before the throne of grace and ask him to watch over what we're doing here. Gracious God and Father, we love you. and We thank you so much uh, for everything that you've done in our lives. We thank you for making us brand new. We thank you for um, cleansing us of our unrighteousness. Lord, Lord we love you. We're so grateful to be here this evening. Thank, thank you so much for the opportunity to stand before these folks and share a little bit about what you're doing in, in our lives and the lives of, of uh, our ministry, God. Lord, I pray right now that anything that is said out of my mouth will be used for your glory. It'll be something that you have placed there for me to say that it won't be something from my own selfish ambitions or vain conceit, God. Bless the time we have here together. May you uh, take your word. Uh, grow it inside of these folks. Lord, those that don't know you, may they have uh, such a burden on their heart that they've got to do something about this nagging thing going on in their life. And may they come to one of us and say, I can't get rid of it. I, I just can't shake it anymore. There's something in my life that wants to be different, that's ready for the change that you guys are talking about, your love that you speak of, God. So we ask, Lord, that if there's anyone here tonight underneath the sound of my voice that you are working in their heart, may they not go home today. May they not go anywhere until they've had a chance to ask someone, how, how do I get this Christ that you guys keep talking about? Lord, we just uh, thank you again. We pray those that do know you would be encouraged by the, the, the next few moments we have together. In your precious name I pray. 
Amen. So uh, the very first video, I just want to very quickly put out an advertisement for uh, Ed Doney. He's a Native American gentleman. He's a Cinnaboyan Indian from Fort Belknap Indian Reservation. Uh, he was originally scheduled to come and be with us tonight and, and sing and play his guitar. He couldn't make it. I had thought I was going to put that video up, but I know we're a little bit short on some time, so I want to go ahead and move forward into uh, what I've had to share for you guys tonight. First of all, I want to say thanks. Uh, Pastor JT for the invitation to come and excited about what I'm about to tell you. I think you guys are going to be excited when, you, when we get done talking. Uh, the first thing I like to do is just introduce myself a little bit. My name is Mark Pearson. I am married uh, to my beautiful bride, April. We were married in 2005. We do have eight, eight, not puppies, not cats, eight kids. Uh, very excited. Uh, my uh, oldest son is a uh, freshman in college, believe it or not, goes down to Louisiana Tech in Ruston. Uh, my 16-year-old, as I spoke about a minute ago, he, we played football. Uh, we live in Malta. I need to add that in there, too. We made the trip over to Cut Bank, and my 16-year-old plays football. And then we start 8, 7, 6, 2 years, and then we had twins on March the 20th. Yes, I do know how that happens. Um, so... What I want to let you know is that I'm currently serving alongside Pastor Bruce Plummer, who was originally going to be here. Um, I work with his organization called Montana Indian Ministries, and Pastor Bruce has been called to be the pastor over, over a church that's on the reservation at Fort Belknap called Fry Bread Fellowship Fort Belknap. And one of the th thoughts and processes that I've talked with Pastor JT is that there's a hope that we can start an, getting going at Fry Bread Fellowship in Great Falls. And, and with, with God's guidance and God's leadership, we'll get that done. Because I think that's where we're heading. I'm going to tell you a little bit more why I think that in just a second. But to tell you a little bit more about Bruce, he's an enrolled tribal member as an Assiniboine Indian at Fort Belknap. Um, he himself is a Assiniboine Cree and Sioux. And one of the things, the reason I tell you that, and one of the things I reason I want to say that, is that he's taught me in the last... I've been with him since February of last year, that anywhere that you go and you speak to a group of First Nations, Native American, indigenous people, you need to let them know where you're coming from. You let them know who you are. And so I want to establish that that's who Bruce Plummer is. And then I want to give you a little bit about me. Uh, I grew up on a Navajo Indian reservation in Arizona, a little town called Chin Lee. If anybody's been there, I'd love to talk to you. I know you can never forget it. I grew up as a missionary kid on the Navajo Indian Reservation, and so one of the things that I get to talk to the little young Indian kids that come up to our ministry is that I get to tell them that I'm a res kid too, and they kind of look at me and, no, you're not. And I get a chance to say, yes, I am. As a matter of fact, I grew up on a reservation, and it's a really neat connection point with them, and so I want to kind of make that connection with you all tonight. Um, to kind of fast forward, uh, kind of through some of the things here, I surrendered to full-time missionary work in 2013. And then February of 2013, I came to Montana from Houston, Texas. In July, after it was a little bit warmer, I went and got my wife and my kids. And all of us at the time, it was uh, my oldest son uh, doesn't live with us. At the time, it was seven of us living in a 384 square foot cabin in Fort Belknap uh, on the Little Rocky Mountain Range. And uh, it didn't have any uh, running water in the cabin and no heating. So by the time November rolled around, as you can imagine, we were starting to think about, okay, God, what, you, what are you doing? And I prayed and asked, and God opened up an opportunity for us to have a home in Malta. And so that's where we currently reside. But of course, we, uh, I commute regularly down to the reservation about 42 miles every day. Uh, Boo-hoo for me, right? But the, but the reality is, that we are missionaries to the uh, Indian people there, the Assiniboine and Grovan people at Fort Belknap. You say, Mark, why would you pick up your family? Why would you graduate from college in May of 2012 and have a job opportunity with United Airlines to work in their IT department? Why would you take all that and choose to pick your family up, large family as it is, and move to an Indian reservation 40 miles or so from the Canadian border. Now, all of you, that doesn't sound crazy. 
You're like, hey, Montana, we're all, we're close to, we're close to Canada. I used to be close to Mexico. You guys get that? And God said, Mark, no to the job, no to what that is, I want you to follow me. And I said, okay, God, whatever you want. If you want to do this, you got to raise the funds. Well, went and talked to my pastor at my church there in, in Houston, and on one Sunday, two services, they raised 75% of my annual budget to be a missionary. So you can't argue with that. <laughs> okay, God, we'll do it. And so we made the decision to move up here. We've been here and been happily serving ever since. So why would I do that? Well, I want to share the vision, the reason that Montana Indian Ministries exists in the first place. Bruce Plummer, as I said before, Pastor Bruce. At one point in time, there was a gentleman you may know named Dr. Henry Blackaby, wrote a book series called Experiencing God. And he had received a vision that said the next great spiritual awakening would begin with North America and begin with indigenous people in North America. And so Dr. Henry Blackaby went to share that vision, I think it was in 2005. And Bruce bought a plane ticket and specifically flew to Oklahoma City to argue and tell Henry Blackaby, you're wrong. I'm, he, I'm speaking for him now. He said, I am Indian. I, this is not going to work. That's not going to happen. And after Dr. Blackaby and Bruce had a chance to sit down and, and share a little bit with each other, Bruce walked away with that same vision that the next great spiritual awakening would begin with the indigenous peoples of the Americas. And so Bruce shared that vision with me, and God lit a fire underneath me and made it where I couldn't help but move to Montana to help serve alongside him with the next great spiritual awakening. And so what I want to share with you is that I believe with all my heart, otherwise I wouldn't be here, that that's actually a reality. That we're going to start seeing a movement of God that we don't understand. We've never seen it before. Or we haven't seen it in a long time. I've been a Christian for a long time. 39 years of age. At a five, five years of age, I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. 34 years now, I've been watching people in churches, big churches, small churches, pray for revival. And there's been little pockets, but there's not been anything considered a massive awakening. I'm telling you, it's coming. God's in charge of it. It's not us. It's not Bruce Plummer. It's not Mark Pearson. It's not JT. It's not Pastor. It's not anything except what God wants. All we're doing is being faithful to the, and be obedient to what God wants us to do. Well, what does that mean? What's that look like? Well, you've already shared where Bruce is tonight, so I won't go into any uh, more details than that, except just simply asking you to be praying for Bruce as he's traveling back from Michigan tonight. You know, a little bit about what you said, Satan is alive and active, working very hard to stop what's happening. This past year, we were doing something called powwow ministry. We do go to powwows. Proud of it. It's an awesome event. I encourage you to go. We went to a powwow, uh, the Mission Canyon powwow there at Fort Belknap. And at Mission Canyon powwow, the second night, we had a lady that I know very well named Pam Walker. She's from my, my old church. She fell and broke both her wrists at the exact same time. Had to be rushed to the hospital. I was the one that drove her the 40, 50 some odd miles from Mission Canyon to the uh, agency hospital. What's up? Next night, not, the, not that night, the next night, a lady named Debbie Mohajer married a Pakistani man named John Mohajer, who's now a believer in Christ. John and Debbie came on mission together to serve at the powwow. Did you catch that? Pakistani man brought his wife to Hayes, Montana, to a mission canyon to go to a powwow. That's only God. At that powwow, Debbie suffered a bleeding aneurysm in her brain. She suffered an aneurysm in her brain. And I had to take her to the hospital again, second night in a row. Drove her to the hospital. She went, life flighted from there to Haver. In Haver, they life flighted her to Seattle. Let me tell you guys, if you know anything about the powwow season, and you know when Mission Canyon was, right? About third week in August. She's been in Seattle Hospital ever since, trying to recover. She's been struggling. Her husband's been by her side. 
let me tell you a little testimony. Her, the, her husband's job, he was very fearful because he doesn't have any insurance. He doesn't have any time to take off. They told him, John, take your time. Do whatever you got to do. So I say all that to simply give you the understanding that Satan is working overtime. He, he, he's affecting what happened in Bruce's family. Pulling him away from this. On the way from Kalispell, which is where one of his daughters lives, over to Glasgow to meet up with everybody and keep driving east to Michigan, she hit a brand new vehicle, hit a deer. I'm telling you, Satan's trying, but he's not winning. Praise God. I mean, you, 10, 11 salvations last week, you said, right? He's not winning. God's doing his thing. And he's, he's definitely going to overcome, as your song said earlier. So why would this, so th my question then is, with regard to what happened to Bruce's little baby granddaughter, why would that happen? And the reality is, is that we live in a broken world. I think all of you know that. We all know brokenness, right? Every single one of us could step up and testify to what bro brokenness is in your life. Well, what now? What do we do if, if, if there is brokenness in the world and we understand that we're not perfect, that life's not perfect? I want you to know something. God is still in control. Praise God. He's still in control. No matter what you see on TV, no matter what you see on the news, no matter what you see, God is still in control. As chaotic as you think your life is, you can rest in God's promise that he is in control. He is sovereign. So the one most important thing that I think I need to share with you guys is the gospel. And uh, Sound Booth, I'm going to throw you another curveball here. I'm not going to worry about playing the video, okay? Just cut that video. I want to share the gospel with you, but I want to share it with you uh, in this way. You see, God created us to be with him. Genesis 1, God created us. In Genesis chapter 3, our sins, the Bible tells us that our sins separate us from God. And then if you look from Genesis chapter 4 to Malachi, which is the end of the Old Testament, you find that our sins cannot be re removed by good deeds. There's nothing you can do to earn salvation. In Matthew through Luke, we find out that God, paying the price for our sin, Jesus died and rose again. The book of John tells us that everyone who trusts in him alone has eternal life. And then if you look at Acts through Revelation, which is the rest of the Bible, life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. Amen? So, if you would, open up your Bibles, if you have them, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I want to share this with you very quickly. I've had people say to me, and let me say this as well, last year we had over 350 people who were missionaries come to work with us at Fort Belknap. People who've made a decision either in Georgia, Tennessee, Texas, all around the states and said, you know what, I'll do it. I'll go to Montana and serve. It's nothing Bruce has done. God's doing it. And a lot of those people, when they come and ask the question, what do we have to do? How, how, do, we, how do we speak to Indians? How, how do we do that? How do we do that with Native Americans? I don't understand with First Nations people. The one thing that always screams out at me when I hear somebody say that, and I don't scream at them, by the way, is reconciliation. Let's read real quick, second... Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 11. Since then, we know what is to fear the Lord, what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade men. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us. 
so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, it is for the sake of God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one, one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do, we do so, we do no, we, I'm sorry, we do so no, no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Number one, reconciliation to the Father. The only way for you who are in a broken world to be reconciled back to the creator of the universe is through Jesus Christ. Number one thing to worry about, reconciliation to God. Number two, Reconciliation to each other. What's the most important thing when it comes to working in ministry with Native Americans, with indigenous people? It's loving them. It's getting to know them. You know, I've used this analogy before, and you guys live in a large enough city that you'll get it. I'm sure there are apartment complexes in Great Falls that have maybe 200 plus people. I'm sure there are. Now take for just a minute, let's go down this road with me for just a second. Go into that apartment complex and I only want you to pick two people out and interview them with a sheet of paper that says one, no, two questions on it. Who is God? What does that mean to you? Two people out of 200. Put all their information, put those two people's information together, compile it, crunch it up, and then make a decision that every single person in that apartment complex believes that way. Is that fair? Is that right? Then stop doing it with the indigenous people. Just because you think you know and have heard somebody say something about what an Indian or Native American believes, that doesn't mean that's who that person in front of you believes. You have to get to know them. You have to love them. You have to have relationship with them. It goes not just with Indian people, with white people, with black people, with every single race in this world. You cannot assume when you walk into a room that you know what that person believes. You have no clue until you get to know them and say, God, how can I speak truth into this person's life? How can I reach this one person for you? God doesn't see them in the, God sees them as either saved or unsaved. That's all he sees. And that's how we should see it. Does this person have a relationship with Christ? Has this person prayed to receive the Lord? If they haven't, our hearts should break for them. And that's where, that's where the difference should end. So my encouragement to you, as we start moving forward with, I believe, this vision that's continuing to go forward. You want to see awakening happen in Great Falls? Do exactly what you're doing right now. You're loving people, feeding them, and then telling them about Jesus. And telling them it in a way that they'll be receptive to it. Because I know there are people out there, I used to be one of them, who would run up to somebody and say, you need Jesus. If you don't get him, you're done. And all I did was turn that person off. But if I show this person love, I tell them I love them every time I see them. They're like, why do you keep saying that? You don't know anything about me. Well, let me get to know you. Tell me what's on your mind. I want to pray for you. And then God, the Holy Spirit. Because see, we can badger someone into changing. 
on the outside, but it does no good. It's got to be inside. And the only way to do it, the only person who can do it is the person who, Holy, is the Holy Spirit. So I would ask right now, let change begin inside this room right now. If you don't know the Lord, I encourage you to come talk to me afterwards. If you do know God, be encouraged that you are on the winning side. I don't care who's in office. I don't care what travesties, what viruses are spreading around the world. God's like, I got that. That's, that's nothing. God's in control. Trust him. Love him. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll be dismissed. God, we love you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to serve you. God, may we not forget that the only reason we get to call you Lord and Savior is because you first died for us. I pray that you'll bless these people as they depart from here. Keep them safe. Give these safe traveling mercies to and from where they need to go. Help them, Lord, to be encouraged as they uh, venture off into the world of, of kingdom building. That they would know that you love them. And that they may not see growth immediately. I'm pretty much convinced that we may not see much growth at all until we get out of the way. And let you do it. Stop trying to make things happen and start asking you what do you want to do. Bless and guide us, Lord. Again, bless this uh, body of believers. Help them to continue to grow closer uh, to you. Bless their plans as they want to reach great falls for you. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Thanks, Mark. Hang on, hang on one second before we go. I don't know about you, but... I know some of you out here are prejudiced. I'm, I just lay it on the line. You know me. Some of you are prejudiced. And you've been holding... I don't know how to say this any other way. You call them drunk Indians, and that's all you see is drunk Indians. And that's what every, it's just like what he says. You put everybody into a box, and you think they're all the same. But you know what? The drunk Indian needs Jesus too. But you can't look at every one of the Native American people and think that's the way everybody is. Quit being prejudiced. Hello? Quit it. We got guys in this place that got lightning bolts t tattooed on them. They were prejudiced. Quit it. Just quit it. And if we just go back to the saying, God sees them how. Saved or unsaved. That's what we need to look at out of any group of people. Saved or unsaved. So enough of that. I'm done chewing you out. I love you. But we are going to take up an offering for Montana Indian Ministries. So you can make it, if you're going to write a check, write it out to set free. We'll give it to Mark in one shot for those guys. But it's 200 miles. They're driving back and forth. We don't know what's going to happen here. This is just the start of this whole thing. We're hoping to have Bruce here in a couple to three weeks. Get him here so you can see him, hear him speak, um, and get it rocking and rolling. So I love you. Come on. We're just going to, we'll just have the buckets at the back, okay, as you head on out of here. Just throw it in the bucket back there for these guys and let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for Mark. I do ask for Bruce and the family as they're driving back. Watch over them, protect them, just give them safety and, and just give them some peace in their hearts, Father God, of what's the tragedies that's gone on. Father, we do know that you are in control of all things, Father God. So um, we just want to kick this off and give you all the praise and honor and glory on what's going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. And do hit that hit that first song on there while everybody's leaving, so they can hear it.